And sharpening your pencil is something that we do multiple times a day. Or I used to. Let me introduce you to a point that almost takes care of itself. If you like a super sharp point, I can offer you that. And if you prefer a blunter point, I can offer you that too. The problem with a sharp point is that it doesn't last. It snaps easily and it wears very quickly. But the point I'm going to show you will last a considerable length of time and is very easily replaced. So the first thing I do after I sharpen my pencil is I tap the point off and then holding my pencil at a normal drawing angle and I usually hold the clip on my pencil about here so I can always go back to this particular rotation of the pencil. So the first thing I do is I scrub the point off. That forms a flat on the end. So the point I've got is basically this. We have a point, snap the point off, don't have to, it just makes scrubbing easier. And then I wear a flat on it at an angle that matches my normal drawing angle. So I have a point that looks like that. Now that gives me a flat face and a sharp edge. And the sharp edge goes about half of the way around the point. If I hold the pencil in the original position, that's to say with the clip here, then I know I've got the flat face against the paper. And a flat face gives me a broad line and not only that, but it gives me a broad line with soft edges. So that if I'm shading, those soft edges very easily merge into each other. I can get much smoother, almost satin finish results from it. There's an almost an absence of line. And but if I want to suddenly produce a, a sharp line, perhaps for some detail or just to define a sharp edge. All I've got to do is turn the pencil over and what I've got there is a super sharp edge, as sharp as your point, except that the sharp edge goes half the way around the point. So I can start using one end of that edge and gradually I turn the pencil. Whenever it starts to look as though it's beginning to go, I just turn the pencil. And I can keep that edge going and going and going. And when it finally begins to wear off, I don't have to stop to sharpen the pencil. I don't want to stop because stopping just interrupts your concentration. All I've got to do is to put the pencil back to the original angle I had it, scrub the flat, and every time you scrub the flat, you automatically sharpen the edge. So we just scrub the flat, turn it over, and we've got our lovely sharp edge back. And of course in normal use, even if I was just shading, that in itself sharpens the edge for when I need it next time. I tend to sharpen my pencils once in the morning. And then unless the lead itself wears down so it becomes too short, um, I really don't have to stop for the rest of the day. All I've got to do is scrub, got the edge. Although it helps having the, in my case, the clip here, I'll show you later, but um, I think you can use the writing on the pencil the same way. Although that helps me to understand where the flat is, I actually don't need to because after a while you get used to the feel of the flat face just skating over the surface. It just glides, it's silky smooth. But on the other hand, if I turn it over, you can feel the bite of the edge. It's just getting deep into the paper and you have to almost pull it through the paper. There's a lovely bit of feedback from this tip. This tip had another advantage, it certainly suits the way I work. Uh, I often like to divide detail and tone. 
so that I can concentrate on the detail without having to worry about the three-dimensional shaping and then the three-dimensional shaping can be added on top so for example I could be using the edge to perhaps uh, we'll, we'll just imagine this is one layer of hair and there are adjacent layers yet to be drawn but let's say that hair was coming down the side of the animal and gradually disappearing underneath and maybe there was a second layer and all I've got to do is just think about the hair itself and what exactly is happening and then all I've got to do is turn the pencil over to the flat face I can just make certain that I've got it if I want to first and then I can begin to add the three-dimensional shaping I can add the tone layer on top actually if you do this gently enough it's quite possible to adjust that top layer without affecting the bottom layer but so I might be thinking okay I'm coming down I'm going down towards the belly of the animal but we're getting darker and darker as we go underneath until we're finally there I like to use clutch pencils I always have but this works just as well with wood case this is a Tombow 2B uh, the one I was using previously was a Stetzel clutch pencil with it with 2B lead in it so same thing again I suggest that you hold the writing facing you or maybe the grade reference facing you so that you always know where that flat is so we go down here oh look there you go the points just snap straight off well that's something that this chisel point overcomes so we'll just form a flat on the end I don't know if you can see that it doesn't need to be huge it's just a, an angled point so that gives me my broad line which is ideal for shading because the soft edges merge nicely together or I can just turn it over and I've got a super sharp edge which is going to last so much longer than the average point will no more constant sharpening and suitable for any pencil and that is the chisel point mm -hmm.